welcome back. I hope you guys are doing well. I am sorry it has been so long between my videos. I have had camera issues, but we don't want to focus on that. Anyway, so I'm back to filming with my laptop for the moment. And let's just talk about the project at hand. So the project at hand right now is, as you can see, I am making tassels. I'm making tassels, but the most, and I'm happy to show you how to do that. It's so super simple, but what I really wanted to, to talk to you about are making bead caps. Now, bead caps are something that you would put, you, generally it, it, they're on the end of jewelry and different things where lots of little components might come together and they, they're there for, de they're, they're there for decorative purposes, but they're also there to hide whatever's going on underneath. So this is what I want to show you. I'm going to focus on showing you how to make. So I've been very busy making all sorts of bead caps for my tassels for my journals. So these, all of these, well, most of these tassels are for journals. And, um, and I can show you what I'm working on and uh, show you how the tassel works for that. Let me show you first quickly how to make a tassel. If you guys want to make along, um, pause the video right now and go get yourself about, oh, I don't know, five or six different strips of fabric about a half an inch each or you can get yourself five or six different pieces of ribbon or lace or anything like that okay so pause the video and then go get your supplies and you need that and either a piece of wire or some string and um, a piece of that that's to make the the tassel and then i'll show you the rest for the tin can or the bead cap all right so hang on we'll be right back Okay, for all of you who are making long, grab your fibers. Now, I am using scrap bits of fabric, some tulle, some ribbon, and um, some fiber, you know, yarn. You can use anything you want. The only thing you need to, to know is that you need a f quite a few pieces. You can rip or cut them, and uh, the only one that you really should focus on as far as color-wise is the one on top. I've been making them out of all sorts of bits and pieces of scraps that I have. So for this particular um, tassel, I am, I've laid it out exactly how I like it, and now I need probably two or three inches of wire. And I'm using, this one is 22 gauge wire, you can use 20, 22, I, I don't, maybe even 24. Anything higher than that, like 18, those are those are sort of thick wires. And um, anyway, you can get the job done with uh, a thinner gauge of wire. So I've cut about, I don't know, this is about six inches of wire. You don't quite need that much, but for demonstration purposes, I'm going to show you. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is find the middle of your tassel. And you just do that by, you know, picking it up and eyeballing it. It doesn't have to be exact. And at this point in time, you might want to move your threads around. You might want to decide, okay... I want this many on this side, and you can cut them now or you can cut them later. It doesn't really matter. You can cut off the tails. I like them to be all varying lengths. You know, it's up to you what you want. Okay, so you want to find the center of your tassel, and you want to take your wire and you want to wrap it around. Just the same way you tie a shoelace, you're going to wrap it around. Now, as you can see, let me just move this stuff over so maybe you can see better. I've wrapped the wire around and I have one small side and I have one long side all right so the reason that you know you could wrap them evenly but you're gonna end up cutting off the short side otherwise and you don't need to waste the wire so you want to take the smaller side and you want to wrap it around the larger the longer piece of ribbon now I'm just using my fingers if your wire, if you're using copper wire like I am, make sure that it's soft or dead soft. If you're using artistic wire, I think it comes uh, fairly soft. And the reason why is there's no reason. As you continue to work any sort of metal, it work hardens itself. And so there's no reason that you need a really long, I mean a really uh, stiff piece of wire. Now I'm not going to waste any of this wire that I'm using at the top. I'm going to use that for my wire wraps for my beads. So wrap it around as far and as long as you'd like until you get the desired 
size you want and then you can use your pliers to just there's one little bit poking up you can either snip it off or you can use your pliers to to mash it in so I am so sorry you guys my filming has just not gone well my camera my brand new camera just the autofocus stopped working and it's been sort of a struggle so I've got a new camera and then had issues with that and so I'm behind on my filming but have definitely continued my projects so now this is what you have you have your your fabric that you've you've your length of fabric that you've folded in half your, your strips of fabric you've wrapped your wire around it and you've wire wrapped it okay now what we're gonna decide this is the fun part and this is where the whole bead cap idea came for me to me the other day I was making a journal and I was almost done with it and I just looked at it and thought I need something and I decided you know I'm sort of a make as you go kind of person and I had a lot of fabric on one end of my work table from making one of a kind fabric for that backpack that I told you that I didn't end up making for my daughter and had all these fabric scraps and then it came to mind to make tassels a tassel for the back for the book so you could then if you don't want to make a bead cap you could then just wire wrap the top of your the same way I've done on this one take your wire and wrap it around or your thread it doesn't have to be wire it could be thread it could be fabric and if you're going to use fabric or thread you want to make sure that you sew it in or glue it down or tie it so that it doesn't come undone wire doesn't come off it doesn't come undone very easily so this one's going to be a keychain I used some fabric for somebody had sent me and I'm going to send it to her as like a little thank you thank you gift and then after I wire wrapped or as I call it pigtailed some beads onto a key fob so this is the next step if you don't it's not necessary if you're gonna put a bead cap but this is an option so you can go ahead and wire wrap your 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 piece so with that what you do is you would take it take your wire and wrap it around just a small piece let me show you another option so that was one option another option is once you've completed this step of wrapping your fabric without the bead cap you come back and you make a bead cap out of wire wrapping beads so all I did was string some beads on the wire and then wrapped it around randomly and I tucked the end inside of the wire wrap okay so that's another option now let me take you to the option of what I am making now which is making these bead caps and you guessed it I'm making them from soda cans so let me just walk you through that and then you'll all be able to make your own bead caps and it's quite fun actually okay so the first thing you want to do is you want to take your tin can and the preparation for the tin can if you watch the tin can earring video it kind of gives you the whole prep for the tin can earring so I've used a it's the same prep for this as well I've used a punch so what I did was I washed and dried my can then I took my can to my Big Shot and I used an embossing folder and I put it, ran it through the embossing folder. You have to realize this is tin, it's soda cans. So it is very brittle, so you don't want to run it through your, you want to, if you want to cut it and emboss it, you want to just do just two steps. The more you run it through your Big Shot, the more brittle it becomes, the more brittle it becomes, it's going to break. And then you're not going to be able to use it for your project. So you have two examples here one that's embossed and one that isn't okay now the next step you want to do in beginning your bead cap is you want to poke a hole in the center of your in the center of your the bead you make hang on one second you want to poke a hole in the center now I'm using a tool you can use a push pin you can use anything to poke a hole in the center of your in the center of your bead I'm in the center of your flower. So this is just a pokey tool somebody gave me, which I absolutely love. You can use anything. This one I think is used to punch leather. So now what you have, I'm going to do it on both of them so you can see it on the embossed one. Let me see which side. Maybe I'll use the silver side. It doesn't matter which side of the, um, of the flower you want to use. You can use the silver or you can use the painted side. Now you do want your hole kind of large. Okay, now you're going to see at the back of your hole, you're going to see some, I don't need to turn it this way, maybe you can see it better. You're going to see that there's some raised bits. Okay, let me just show you how you remedy that. Okay, the next step is you're going to cut, before, and then I'll show you how to smash it down. You're going to cut 
from one of your petals straight to the hole. So this is what you have, okay? Now, where it's poked up, I'm gonna use a silver side, but it, you still want this poked down. Where it's poked up, take the back side of your pliers, or you could take any, you could take anything really, and you just wanna smash, you just wanna rock it back and forth to mash down the, the ends that are poking up because you don't want to cut yourself. You may look at it and you may go, oh, I have to make the hole bigger in my, in my flower. Now the reason you, you know, the whole part is gonna go over where you've done your wire wrapping. Where you've wire wrapped your bead, right here is where the hole needs to be big enough to go over that. This is gonna sit on top. And then just go back and poke down. Just take your pliers or any anything. You could take a pencil, you could take a, a pen. You just don't wanna do it with your fingers because it is a little sharp. Okay, so now you have, this is what you have now. You have, okay, your flower, hole cut in, and you've cut a slit. Now we're gonna to begin to make our bead cap. Now we've decided that the silver side's gonna be the top of the bead cap, and we start bending down with our fingers. Now you wanna go slowly, remembering that this is just a tin can, and the metal is brittle. So I got a lot of my packages wrapped and a lot of them off in the mail and I still have one more package I'm working on and then I will be done for my mailing for the holiday season. Okay, so this is what it looks like right now, okay? You could, this is a great way to make your tin can flowers if you wanted to stack one thing on another on another, like stacking them, but this is what it looks like. Now, if you want yours to be more rounded, you're going to have to go back in and just work with the metal. Work with the metal. Work with the metal and you just want to keep going until until you get now eventually as we continue to work it one side of this flower is going to wrap around the other. It's going to end up coming together instead of being a five petal flower it'll look like a four petal flower and that is what's going to form your bead cap. So you just want to be gentle with it, remembering that it, reminding yourself that it's just tin, and keep working with it until you get the desired shape you'd like. You also need to, to make your bead cap wide enough to fit the top of your fabric, like your wide enough to fit the top of this part of your fabric. Now you can decide whether you want to, you could go ahead and wrap it and then stick it through or you can do, let me see what I have here. I have a bunch of them in progress. You know me, I can't just make one of something. I have to make multiples of everything that I do. Let me say I have many of them. So basically, once you get it to this point, you can decide, okay, I'm gonna tie my fabric. I'm either gonna go ahead and wrap my fabric here with my wire and then stick it through my bead cap or I'm just gonna stick it through my bead cap. Now. These I've used alcohol ink on. If you're going to use alcohol ink or paint, now would be the time when you would do that. You would paint it, alcohol ink it, whatever you're going to do, and you're going to let it thoroughly dry, and then you will thread it. You don't want to paint it after you get it on your fabric. I mean, get it over your tassel. So now, we need to futz with it a little to get the inside of the the tassel, the, the metal bits over your, you know, through the hole of your, of your flower. So I have, my camera just went kaput on me. And basically I filmed a whole lot of videos and then I went back and I watched them and they were all out of focus. And it's an autofocus camera and I was running it remotely from my iPhone and it looks in focus on there, but only for me to realize after I played it, it wasn't. It was crazy. So, needless to say, I filmed a lot of stuff that I couldn't use and then tried to work it out for the past few days to, to get a different or fix the camera. It was, it just, I haven't resolved it. But needless to say, I'm going to try to get all the videos that I already filmed that I can't use back up for you. So, this is what your bead cap looks like. Now, obviously, if I was going to paint it, I would have already done it before then. Right, now you want to add your bead. 
Do you want to add your bead on top? And it's just as simple as that. Now let me just show you some of the ones I've made. And then you would wire wrap your beads. And if you guys want further wire wrapping tutorials, go back and watch my um, earring video or the um, journaling charm video. And they have wire wrapping. Super simple. So this is how it's going to look. And I think it looks awesome. I'm really digging it. Like I love this one. I loved the Arizona iced tea can. I like the way it looks. Now I did two bead caps. Now if you want it to be more of a flower shape like this, you just have to slit each petal a little bit. One all the way to the center and then the other one's just a tiny bit so that when you um, wrap it around, it gives it that look. Let me show you some of the other ones I've done. This is a double bead cap, also alcohol inked. And then the beads were added and then the clip for the journal. And this one's similar. Now I like the fact that it moved. If you don't, get your dimensional um, glazes out. Your diamond glaze or your stickles or your um, glossy accents and paint the top of the bottom bead cap and then, you know, maybe you would want to use a little washi tape. Washi tape it down till it totally dries and then it, then you won't have any movement. So let me show you a couple of other little bead caps that I've made that you might be interested in too. And one I made out of paper. So this is a super simple fun way to make bead caps as well. And let me just show you that. And then I'll show you the one on my journal. Okay, so if you're going to make them out of paper, it's the same process. It's just, I used, you can use a circle, you can use the flower, you could use the scallop. I've used the scallop punch for mine. Same idea. Cut it to the center and start to dome it. Now you could cut it in half and make your make your dome, but these are thin book pages, so you're gonna wanna um, you're gonna want it to be a little thicker. You know, you want it to have some durability. So you just start wrapping it around the bottom and then wrap the top over, and then you just keep coning it until you get to the size of the cone that you want. Okay. And then once you once you get to the size cone that you think is gonna cover your beads or cover your your wire wrapping, then what you would do is take your white glue or your glue stick, take your glue stick for this part, glue stick this down, all right, until you have a cone, let it dry. Then you're going to get to this part, all right. Now, what I would do next is because they're only book pages, I would take my PVA wet or PVA glue, white glue, Mod Podge, and I might glue another book page around or at least. Put a couple of coats on it because it is just a book page you want it to you want to adhere the underneath to it and you want to you know make it a little bit more durable then you snip the top and here's one that i've done that too and then you feed it onto your onto your tassel this one i've gone back and i've painted and then i took a children's metallic marker and did some designs on and then did my wire wrapping. It's the same, same technique. So let me show you the one that I have on the journal that I, the one, the journal that I'm working on or trying to finish. I'm not quite finished with it, so I don't want to give you guys a flip through of the journal, but I'll give you kind of a look at the tassel part, which I think this one is by far one of my more favorite tassels because it. It's made from an Arizona iced tea can, and I just like the way the flower shape that it made. I really enjoyed it, and I thought it came out really good. So I hope you guys learned a lot, or at least enjoyed a little bit of this video segment of making bead caps for your journaling charms, or your um, journaling tassels. Now these also, these tassels can be made into anything. You could, I've made some before where you put a bead at the top and you make wings on it and make it an angel. Um, I've made some where you um, have made fairies with them. If you have a butterfly punch, you could cut out the butterfly part and you know make wings for a butterfly punch. I've made them as tiebacks. As you can see, this one's going to be a keychain. This one's a keychain. Really, what you use your tassels for is up to you. Anyway, as always, I'm sending you so much aloha. Take care.